in the morning. It's 13 away from the top of the hour. It's the voice of Indiana County, WCCS AM 1160, 101.1 FM. You can check this interview out on Facebook as soon as we get it posted. But let us meet Dr. Sander Mex, Indiana Regional Medical Center, the IRMC Physician Group, and uh, new to the hospital. It's good to meet you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Wonderful. It's good to have you back with us or here with us for the first time today. Obstetrics, gynecology, you're an OBGYN, but you bring an extra uh, little benefit, and that is robotic surgery. And uh, that's a field that is really expanding, isn't it? It's exploding. Your hospital uh, is very uh, on top of things. They are moving forward with the newest technology. They do have the newest robot here. Um, there's nothing in Pittsburgh that's a, better than the robot you have right here. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, so let's talk about it because this is uh, really an exciting development uh, in general surgery overall, but in, in the OBGYN field. Is it common uh, to have robotic surgery in OBGYN? No, actually, it's not common. It should be common. Uh, there's a learning curve. Mm -hmm. And so most physicians who are comfortable with doing what they've been doing for 20 years are not going to want to start all over again, be students, and oh. muddle through a surgery and look stupid. <laughs> uh, so uh, truth is, it's not for everyone. Uh, you have to have that certain skill set, that mindset, and be willing to start from scratch the ground up and learn to operate all over again. Now, I remember when Dr. Dan Clark came and we talked about what a proctor is and what a proctor does. You also are a proctor in OBGYN robotics. Yes, and, and I robotic proctored surgery. prior to that with laparoscopic uh, surgery and now with the robotic also. It, it must be pretty exciting for younger doctors, or for any doctor really, to be able to learn this new technique, and you're right there teaching them. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. So you're working with Dr. Quinice Hurdle right now, and she's done her first? Uh, she's uh, done a couple, uh -huh. and I uh, assisted her last week, and she did just fine. Yeah, yeah. When, can, think back to when you began uh, with robotic surgery and what your feelings were about that after having practiced for many years, I'm sure. Uh, and here comes this new technology, and you get to be one of the first people to get your hands on it and, and to really use it. Well, uh, prior to doing the robotic, we did laparoscopic surgery. Mm -hmm. So uh, so people should understand when we say robotic, it's not R2-D2 walking into the room. You know, the yeah. robot doesn't do anything. It's like a $2.1 million video game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I'm not on the controls, it just sits there. It doesn't do a thing. Yeah. So the robot actually guides our instruments, and it gives us a few options you don't have with the laparoscopy. The laparoscopic instruments are a straight stick. So imagine if I told you to try to tie your sh shoelaces, but I don't want you to bend your wrists and I want you to put a patch over one eye so you don't have any depth perception. Mm. That's laparoscopic surgery. Yeah. And that's what we were doing for a long time. That's how we were removing uh, our, our organs and uteruses. Uh, the robot adds a whole new dimension. It uh, articulates. That means it has wrist action. And instead of looking at a big screen, where usually with laparoscopic surgery, my assistant will hold instruments also. And I'll tell them, okay, now move that over to the left note your other left closer no not that close back up <laughs> now i operate everything i can operate three instruments plus the camera zoom in zoom out go to the left go to the right turn upside down whatever i want to do yeah and it gives you a, a much more precision so it's it's very precise surgery Tell me about the procedures that you're able to do in this particular field, OBGYN, with well, robotics. Yeah, the big one is hysterectomies. Mm -hmm. uh, but a lot of women suffer from endometriosis. Uh, they may not be aware of it. Uh, the average uh, onset of diagnosis of endometriosis is nine years. So ladies, go to your doctor and talk to them. You, there's plenty of TV ads on there right now that you can see mm -hmm. uh, bringing up this very subject. But with endometriosis, you have tiny little implants peppered all throughout your pelvis. And they can invade in organs, sit on top of vital organs. Removing them without causing damage isn't easy. Uh, unless you're using a robot. Yeah. Endometriosis is, is one of those. It's not the mystery now that it used to be, is it? Uh, depends on who you talk to. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, Some but, people have not heard of it. I'm really? shocked. You know, I talked wow. to patients, and, you know, yesterday, yesterday I operated on someone. It wasn't with the robot. It was a more of an emergency situation. Mm -hmm. But I counseled the mother afterwards, and, and uh, she had no idea what endometriosis was. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing in today's day and age when there yeah. is all that information out there. But it's out there. You just have to want to learn it. Yeah. And and in that case, with endometriosis uh, and, and really with diverticulitis, some of the other uh, diseases, you just know you have a bellyache. You know something's not right in there, but you really haven't been able to put a name on it, have you? You're exactly right. Yeah. All right, so that is one of the um, ways that we can approach um, uh, mm -hmm. one of the illnesses or diseases that uh, get involved with obstetrics and gynecology. Uh, the field as a whole, not just robotics, but OBGYN, uh, has it made substantial progress in the ways that we diagnose and, and treat conditions uh, for women? Yes, uh, constantly. There's uh, Amazing improvements in the survivability of uh, babies, the mothers, how they uh, do with uh, deliveries. Uh, it, it's, it's a huge transformation. Yeah. Now let's talk about you coming to Indiana, because uh, there are a lot of uh, hospitals across the region, really across the state and, and this entire northeastern part of the United States, doing away with obstetrics and gynecology and uh, just uh, saying, okay, you'll have to go to a bigger facility in a bigger town. Well, it's sad because as uh, obstetrics becomes more complicated, we're able to provide more uh, high t higher tech service, then it, the demand is there for the higher tech. And if you're not showing the volume necessary to support that technology, unfortunately, hospitals that don't do that many deliveries are, are, are unable to keep pace. So it's a really big commitment by IRMC to do this, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Yeah. You could consider it, like in the retail business, a loss leader. Oh, yeah. Okay. I understand that completely. What brought you to Indiana and to IRMC? Coincidence, circumstance. Uh, I was a, More recently, I was at Steubenville, Ohio, uh, operating there. I uh, had a huge volume of uh, patients there, but uh, the practice uh, was ha struggling with uh, uh, hiring doctors. That's a problem across the country right now. Actually, mm -hmm. there's a shortage of OBGYNs. Oh, yeah. And uh, I found myself being on call 15 days a month, which is a little bit too much, okay? <laughs> so um, I went online, and amazingly, this was the first place that popped up, the only place I interviewed. And I saw a beautiful opportunity here, a nice fit. I talked with Dan Clark, which he's an amazing man. He has an amazing program here with this robot. And, uh, hey, I got the brand-new robot, the newest toy. I mean, you you tell a you know, a race driver will give you this Ferrari. Well, uh, sure. And you're a local boy anyway. Well, I'm from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. I grew up in, well, I, I came here from Hungary when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. But I've lived in Pittsburgh my entire life. Yeah, so it, it was really a good fit. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, we get, we get a doctor in that comes from um, uh, some warmer climate, and he comes here and says, I wasn't expecting this. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you're used to it. You know, oh, I'm you, used to that. You know what? So here you are at IRMC, accepting new patients. Yes. Uh, and, and willing to uh, talk to anybody, really, about what it's about at, uh, at IRMC with uh, OBGYN, with the robotics, and, uh, and really involved in what is a, a, a ground floor type of operation with robotics and OBGYN at IRMC. Yes. Yeah, must be. Uh, it's exciting for us. I don't know how you feel about it, but it's, it's exciting for us because we, we hear about um, maternity wards closing down, about hospitals turning away people who have come to have their baby there saying, sorry, we don't do that sort of thing anymore. Uh, and here's IRMC stepping into what really is a breach in, across western Pennsylvania, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've, I've seen it all in the years in Pittsburgh, and I hope to bring that to this community. So I think we're going to move forward, I hope. It's good to have you with us here today, and it's good to have you here in Indiana. Somebody wants to get in touch with you. Somebody wants to uh, sign up and become one of your patients. So what do they need to do? Is there a phone number? Is it this one, Annie? Oh, okay, it's this one here. It's the uh, IRMC Physician Group number. It's 888-452-IRMC. That's 888-452-4762. You can also go to irmcdocs.org. 
and meet Dr. Mex that way or any of the other physicians involved with the IRMC Physician Group. And, uh, and uh, well, that's a wonderful thing that you're here. I'm glad you came and visited with us this morning, too. Glad to be here. Thank you. It is the voice of Indiana County, WCCS, AM 1160, 101.1 FM. Dr.